So what's the average home going to cost in 50 years? Well, according to this article, that figures as high as $10 million. That sounds utterly insane, right? In this video, I'm going to break down the reasons why real estate is outpacing inflation and how this trend is likely to get exponentially worse. Now, if you already own your own home, you're likely thinking, oh, this sounds great. Wrong. If your home winds up being worth $10 million in retirement, have fun paying $100,000 to $200,000 a year in property taxes. Let's discuss how corporate America will outbid the people. Now, before we dive into that, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Is this so-called bubble going to pop? Do you really think that homes will be 10 million in 50 years? Go ahead and leave your honest opinions below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me disclaim a few things. First, I don't think that what I'm about to discuss is indicative of our current housing market. The amount of corporate-owned single-family homes is still a very tiny, almost irrelevant number. But so was Tesla when they started only 10 years ago. Now every car manufacturer is developing their own EV. So what we're about to discuss is more of a cautionary tale that's already underway. To give you a small idea, Invitation Homes, which is backed by Blackstone Group Hedge Fund, just announced they're partnering with Pulte Homes, a national home builder, to build 7,500 brand new homes over the next five years, not to mention the thousands of resale homes annually that they purchase. Pulte is literally building homes for corporations to rent back to us. Now, if and how we regulate corporate ownership in the future, that's going to dictate how and where we live. Affordable housing is already the biggest problem in real estate. Introducing corporations and hedge funds into our neighborhoods can have massive effects on affordability, as I'll explain later. God forbid we do have another crash in the near future, these corporations will basically look at this as a sale and could buy up everything in sight at an unprecedented scale. Now, conventional wisdom states that a house's price is the maximum amount that an area's average local buyer can afford to mortgage over 25 to 40 years. Basically, homes are only worth what people can actually afford. This new paradigm, as this article states, is that a home's value is now the maximum amount of annual rental income that can be extracted by a global investor, then multiplied by maximal institutional leverage. If your mind just blew, don't worry, I will break this down. Let's just say a first time home buyer can only afford $1,200 a month. That puts them around $225,000 with 5% down. Now an investor looks at the potential rent. If that investor thinks that they can rent that same home for $1,250 a month, they can afford to pay $300,000 for that same home with the minimal down payment being 20% for them. Now take an Airbnb investor. They can figure they can sell this short-term rental and rent it for $2,500 per month. Now suddenly they can afford to pay $600,000 because that higher rent can cover a higher mortgage debt. Now this is where things get really scary. Instead of small time investors like me, Bring in the hedge funds. Like all monopolies, hedge funds can shave profit margins to absolutely nothing in order to create a position within a market. Amazon had negative profit for seven years while they just decapitated their competition. Has Tesla even made a profit yet? Meanwhile, they're the most valuable car company by a landslide. They're now worth more than four times as much as Toyota, which is in second place. And this company, <laughs> Tesla didn't even really exist a decade ago. So back to hedge funds. See, once Wall Street gets involved, pardon my French, but we're all effed here. Hedge funds and corporations can do what's called leveraging. Basically, they can access cheap debt. Before Lehman Brothers went down, they were leveraged by a multiplier of 31. That's like me giving you $3 million because you saved $100,000. Now with that leverage, they can pull off some crazy stuff. They can now afford to pay $1.2 million now for that same home. If the assets go bad, they can basically do what banks did with mortgages, bundle them into portfolios, and then sell them on Wall Street derivative markets. In short, the common sense calculations that you and I would use to make an investment simply doesn't apply here. I know I keep mentioning Tesla, 
But throw enough money at something and you can change an entire industry or market segment. Nobody cared if Tesla made money. They changed an entire industry without even earning a dollar and become number one overnight. So what if institutional money decides to be the biggest, baddest single family home operator in the world? They will. So how do we get to $10 million? I'm going to give you seven reasons right now. First is simply that population is growing. Right now, we have 7.9 billion people. In 50 years, that number jumps to 10 and a half billion. More people means more demand, which ultimately translates into higher prices. Second, more people are now living alone. People are marrying later in life, having less kids, and as a result, the amount of people per dwelling is consistently diminishing. For my conservatives out there, it's the breakdown of family values. Third, we have a lack of housing construction. For the last decade, we've only been building six homes for every 10 new households. So with a diminished supply and hyper demand, well, come on, freshman year, Econ 101 right here, folks. Fourth, people are moving to cities. Four billion people currently live in urban areas. That number is scheduled to hit 7 billion in 30 years, then 8 billion in 50 years. So while total population will only go up by roughly a third, housing demand where most people live will actually double. Now we get to the good stuff. Number five, multiple home ownership. Now, according to this article, more than 23 million American landlords own more than one home. This also means that 115 million Americans don't get to own a home because someone more wealthy owns two. Now, on the surface, that sounds pretty much like uh, liberal complaining, right? Well, in a minute when I break things down further, it'll make much more sense. Okay, number six, real inflation. Real estate always tracks with inflation. Just in the past year, Canadian home prices went up 40%. So if housing prices increase, say 7.5% annually, that's exactly how we hit $10 million. Now, I did some simple math and it totally wigged me out. So my father purchased a home in LA back in 1972 for $78,000. Had my parents did nothing but just stay put, that home right now is worth $1.8 million. Now I get that Kansas is in LA, but the average home here in Las Vegas right now is $405,000. Using the same 49 year trend in LA, that would make the same home worth about $9.4 million in 50 years here. That historical model also doesn't account for how and why prices will increase at a higher rate moving forward. Remember those years going back in time were filled with 10 and 15 year mortgages, double digit interest rates, you get it. Okay, last but not least is the monopoly factor which we covered earlier. But just think, Walmart essentially wiped out mom and pop grocery stores around the country. They come into town, lower their prices, and who cares if they lose some money for a year, it's one warehouse. They drive out their competition and then raise prices when their competitors are dead and gone. So just like your grandparents couldn't fathom the current price of homes right now, obviously that's gonna be us someday. Except the new economic paradigm is designed to make you a renter, not an owner. In the end, what can we do to keep homes affordable for the people? Well, the author of this article gave a few ideas which I personally think are a bit too liberally minded for my taste. First, he proposes we make it illegal to make money off of necessities like shelter. Now, come on, bro. This is rainbows and unicorn talk. People need to live someplace. Many people can't save money to purchase a home and aren't financially stable enough to maintain that mortgage. So they will have to rent. Well, here in the real world, nothing is free. Who's gonna rent a property to you and not make money? It, it, this is just stupid and almost rhetorical. So continuing along, he wants it to be illegal to be a for-profit landlord, illegal to Airbnb a non-owner occupied home, illegal for hedge funds to purchase neighborhoods, and illegal to financialize. I would say securitize homes as tradable bulk commodities. It just kind of goes down the rabbit hole from here. You know, 250% penalties for owning a second home, increasing tenants' rights so landlords invest more than they can extract, 
zoning entire neighborhoods as owner occupied, starting nonprofit government banks to lend mortgages. Then he wants to tax rental income at 90% in order to use that money to build owner-occupied homes with all that tax income. Last but not least, he wants to file a class action lawsuit against Airbnb. Now obviously, I think all these solutions are just batshit crazy, but he does make some good points. Should we really be okay with hedge funds and corporations owning single-family homes in our neighborhoods? Do you really want to live next to an Airbnb? Should these hedge funds be allowed to securitize single family homes as investment tools? You tell me, I'd really love to see your comments below. And again, while you're at it, tell me your thoughts on the overall market. Are we headed for a crash? If so, tell me, what markets do you think are going down first? And while you're here, check out the video on the screen on what you should really know and check out the five reasons real estate is cooling down right here. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.